All right, I'm going to do the intro for uh, episode six of our Netflix Unchained Commentary Analysis series. Uh, episode six out of eight. I'm doing the intro while Emily finished chewing her trail mix. Um, <laughs> there's no chocolate left in that now. Oh, there are. I see some. I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to take it. Oh, God, I want to You're such a jerk. You're going to wait two seconds for me to finish my... No, game. it's late. It's late, and we got to crank these out because the Tour de France starts in July, and it is late June. And uh, so we got we to gotta get this going. Um, all right. Episode six, it starts with uh, with with Philipson thinking he won. This is, It goes back and forth again. It starts with the stage that Wout won. I believe that was stage two or three. Um, and he did the he did the Red Bull wings. Remember yeah. that one? But Philipson uh, wins the bunch sprint for second. With And yeah, you can see Wout up there, but he's not looking up. So he he didn't know that there was a guy up the road. And he, he celebrates. He thinks he won stage yeah, that was really heartbreaking which it's tough it's, it's definitely embarrassing they show his director like you could tell his, his directors like can't stand that shit from this dude um but it's not as bad and this happens this happens at some big race every year if not the tour where the, the much worse version is the guy who is about to win and posts up like half a wheel early and then dudes come around on the side that happens that happens Way too often. It's crazy how often that happens. Just dumb. just sprint to the line and then do the celebration. But uh, guys always – so it's one of those like you're being hard on Jasper for – it's not like he messed up his sprint. Uh, he just didn't know where he was on the road. He like kind of looked dumb on TV for a second. I don't know. It's like I kind of – I that bothers me exactly as much as when a guy crosses the line and then hits the button on his Wahoo. I don't know why. That's a pet peeve of mine. You see the guys like, you're at the tour, you're on TV, you, you don't want to mess up your average power. Is that what we're doing here? It's, it's just, it, 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 you, marathoners do the same thing. They're just like, as they cross the line, they're hitting their watch. Like, I'm a, I'm a pretty notorious power dork, and I, I will not do that. Uh, or, or hit the button with 200 meters to go. Or maybe there's a segment. I don't know what these guys are doing, but you, like, pay attention to that. You'll see that okay. all the time. They all do it? The, no, not all of them, but like a very hefty percentage, like like thirty to forty percent. You will see them crossing the line, not in a not mid pack field sprint thing, but like the the first second they get, they're turning off their their water, like they don't want you to know where the team bus is uh, when it uploads to Strava. I don't know what goes Can't on. They I don't just know. crop the last. There's a five lot of things seconds. they can do. It's it's an OCD thing. It's like the ride is done, you hit the button. That's that's what's yeah. that's what's going on. Um, but it's 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 palpable, and it, I I think that's that's worse than. For sure, the worst thing you could do is celebrating and then getting beat. Uh, but I'm going to call it a tie between hitting the button on television and posting up uh, for second okay. because wow, it's up the road and you were, you know, your head's down and you. Okay. And the thing is, like guys do get swallowed up in the last K, like whatever's going on. That there's, you know, there's a breakaway and like they, I mean, it happens later. But like sprinters, there's no way they're keeping track. Like if if he was counting how many guys were coming out for the breakaway, he's going to lose the sprint. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. you just got to pay attention to one thing, yeah, yeah. and he, you see him like go up a crazy gap. Anyway, so I, we're we're I'm forgiving Jasper disaster, uh, is and I like that that rhymes. I know so many disasters, and they're all functional. I think it's great. A lot of functional disasters. I'm happy he's a disaster, what? and you know oh. what? He made it. He did it. He did. Yeah, we'll he get we'll get there. We'll get okay. there. That that was that's the arc of this one. So this so this episode they they focus on the uh, Alpecin uh, de Kunic team. Their Dekunic was a funny one. I, do you know what Dekunic is? No, me neither. Um, I believe it's it's. I think it's flooring. There there are a lot of home goods. So there's Quick Step was was floors, and then Dekunic. I think oh, it might be windows. There's a well, something is windows. Alpacin obviously is the is the shampoo, which you know because I was sponsored by them. I actually still have the shampoo and I use some today just for this episode and because I need a haircut. Um, but I did. I, I do have my caffeinated shampoo. Uh, they're no longer a sponsor, but the shampoo is left over. Are you gonna charge them? Are you gonna invoice them for this? Maybe. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. I'm, I'm a businessman. What are the other title sponsor teams uh, that we just in general on the in the show? Jumbo Chumbo. Jumbo Chumbo. You just called them Jumbo Vista, which is Visma. Oh. <laughs> it's a, whatever. It, so it might as well be Chumbo. Um, what do you know? What a Yumbo is? No. I believe it's like a 7-Eleven, like a Dutch 7-Eleven. Like, oh, okay. like little quick uh, okay. stores. They're they're pulling, I think they're, well, I think that company had like some crazy scandal, like the CEO, somebody went to jail. There was something nasty with the with the Yumbo situation. Um, 
but they're so they're, the rumor is that they're going to be funded by the Saudis who just took over golf is that Jumbo Chumbo is going to be Jumbo Saudi or, or Saudi Chumbo or I don't, yeah it's funny what the title it's always fun to think about the title sponsors and what they're doing there was one um, uh, Katusha was a sponsor uh, of a that, that's that was a Russian company so they're they're not around no more okay uh, but Katusha uh, other than sounding like a sneeze, they uh, Soviet uh, like artillery manufacture. That's why I have that Katusha rocket launcher. When my rocket launcher broke, I was like, I'm gonna buy a Katusha this time because they sponsor cycling. What was the what was the other brand? Acme. <laughs> but I remember Dekunic. There was some kind of a drama because Dekunic was a was a Quick Step co sponsor, and then they switched over to Alpecin, which is like in the world of. We're in Belgium, and there's a total of eight sponsors. It's someone calling the Decunic guy from one team and poaching him. And there's for sure there's some bad blood behind the Decunic swap over. That'd be like a million dollar deal for sure. Uh, and and someone someone was pissed that Patrick Lefevre got one pulled over on him in that move. Uh, mm-hmm. Lost out to to Vanderpool sponsorship drama. Yeah, it's That'd always fun. Like when one goes, oh my god, when one I goes to the that. other. For sure. Well, it's weird because it's like there's, you know, it, the pro teams, there's only, you know, there's 18 teams and they're all going to the same 18 bike brands and asking for different shit. It's just there's, there's, it's finite. There's, you know, there's, there's a couple companies that make computers. So everyone's kind of like lowballing each other and bidding and it's just, it's, it's nasty. And I would, yeah, I would for sure, I'd watch a documentary about the Decunic uh, flooring or windows or whatever the heck a Decunic yeah. is. Um, Sounds like a dirty world. Yeah. But this was their first year racing the tour. Um, right? Was it? Did they say that? Yeah, I think so. I think it was their first time in the tour. That's they possible. Were, I they lose were track. For like eight. So that that would make sense because they're a they're a pro conti team. So there's three tiers of teams. The the continental teams are like the the really low level, that's kind of considered amateur. And then there's the world tour or the top ones. And then the in between is the pro continental. It's called, which is like a no man's land. You don't want to be there. You're not guaranteed a tour spot. But if you have Matthew Vanderpool. Basically, you're guaranteed an invite. They can invite a certain number of pro Conti teams. Okay. So a Conti team, a Continental team, could never do, uh, and they're horribly named too because there's Continental, there's Pro Continental. Uh. <laughs> Somebody lacked some creativity. Yeah, it was the UCI. But Alpecin just really by having Matthew Vanderpool, they had a guy who could win all the classics and who's really animated in a. So they him him dropping out comes like that. That's a big hit for that team because that's the reason they're there. Um, and he was definitely expected. Like he, he, he came up, he's the same age, I believe as well. Van Ander very close. And they came up like from age 15, there's photos of them like in middle school, uh, like world junior cyclocross championships back and forth. They were trading, just making each other better for, for a decade. And then they just go all the way to the top. Um, and it's gotta be weird where Vanderpool is having a bad tour and, and pulls out. Uh, whereas Wout is just somehow getting better all spring. Um, and they were like rivals and close and that's gotta be a bummer for, for Matthew on, yeah. on that move. Uh, seeing his, seeing his old, his old bro just kind of kick his ass at that one. But yeah. Vanderpool got knocked down a peg, uh, during that tour for sure. They, they show Vanderpool struggling. They show him training between the Giro. Um, it sounds like he did 60 race days before the tour de France, yeah. which is a lot, but again, like so did Wout who seems to have been fine. Um, whatever. I mean, you know, I'm not going to knock a guy. He had a bad, he had a bad time. Uh, they show him like doing like digging deep in a workout and there's like a training camp of some sort, but he's, he's suffering and he's like pulled over in a ditch off his bike. A little bit dramatic. Yeah. A little bit was, dramatic. Was, is that what it was? He was just oh, sick. It, it, or not no, sick, it, but just, it looked like puking. he just did an interval and I don't even say puking. I don't know if it was like a stomach thing. Puking implies like you have food that you, you know, didn't digest or whatever. Like, I never puked in a in a workout unless I like ate something wrong. This this just looked like he he suffered so hard he like had to fall off the bicycle, which like I've seen guys do that in a race. Like I did that once in a race. Like I collapsed at the finish line and like lay on the ground and pissed myself. Um, I've seen guys like go places in time trials, whatever. But like never during a workout. Like yeah. So I mean maybe I don't know. That's that might be a thing that he does. Um, or, or he was hamming up for the camera. Um, I'm sure he trains very hard, but they all do. But I, yeah, I never seen, I never saw that move before. Uh, and then you see, they, they took blood. You see, they did a thing. Yeah, that was, I, I saw that. Was that the 
lactate? There's a, there's a lactate test, which can now it, it happens remotely. We used to do it like in a lab where it's kind of like a couple times a year thing, but you, you go to the lab and, and they, they have, here's, you're doing this many watts, and then they, and they check your blood, uh, and then they up your watts, and then they keep doing that, and they, and they, and, and at, at four, four millimoles of something, I don't, I'm not a damn scientist, uh, that's your lactate threshold. So that's mm-hmm. below a certain amount, you can clear it. Okay. Uh, but above a certain amount, that means it's accumulating in you, and you're, and you can only theoretically, like your lactate threshold, you can ride exactly one hour solid. Uh, so there's some riders who have like the, the climbers will have a high lactate threshold, the sprinters will be lower. A guy like Wout, I bet his Wout, well Wout also, but I was thinking Vanderpool. But those kind of guys would probably have uh, an insane ability to clear it. So like they could do a two minute sprint, be full of lactic acid, and I bet like their blood just it would just clean it out real quick. That would probably be his. His deal um, at the training camp, the Alps and training camp. I liked the the coach standing there with his laptop, telling the riders their intervals and yeah. how much recovery they get. Okay, we only get two minutes recovery after these these four minute intervals. Uh, so I was just like, yeah, <laughs> that sucks. <Sound> miserable. <laughs> just this guy's got his MacBook Air. Um, training camps. I, th- I think there's there's always a lot of footage in in cycling documentary or whatever that of of uh, follow cars of guys like riding with a car behind them. Yeah. And I just, I just want to tell people that like never happens. The training camps, like that's where the cameras are going to come. Uh, like you'll have, so at a training camp, that means the, that means you have, you know, the, here's your 10 days where everyone's in Tenerife or in Mallorca, whatever. Uh, so they're going to have the massage and the schedule. And basically for all intents and purposes, that's a race as far as like how the riders see the day to day. They don't have their time. Isn't theirs. Um, no one has like a follow car at home. No one's doing that. Like the normal ride for these guys, ninety nine percent of the time, is just like they got to pump into CO two to change their own flat, like everybody else. There's a crash in the peloton again. Crash in the peloton. A lot of crashes in the peloton. I like the um, I like the the walkie talkie that dangles from the thing on the retractable. <laughs> yeah. I think that's new. I don't remember that from when I was racing. I think that's an an advancement, you technological advancement. For what? Yes. I don't know. I do. I do. Do cops have that? I feel like it's Probably. on the thing or built into the whatever, but this is just like it's just kind of glued to the ceiling, and the, the guy pulls it down. But it, it looks it looks legit. It looks cool. There, there's more. Uh, yes, for disaster, the the director complained that he's forgetting stuff that he always forgets his shoes and wh- or whatever. Uh, that is one of those like I I, I I'm going to defend the guy in general, but you, you can't. Your job is pretty simple. You got to you know bring your stuff in a backpack. Don't forget your shoes yeah. and your socks. Um, Didn't I, you tell me a story once? You left your shoes. I forgot my shoes one time in mm-hmm. in. A thousand races. I forgot my shoes, and that was not. So this is okay. So you have a. Uh, every rider has two rain bags. It's called. In your rain bag, it's just like a team logo bag, but it's got everyone's got their name on it. And in that bag, you you're responsible for it yourself. Um, but you have uh, leg warmers, a shoe cover, a jacket, like anything that you might need during the stage. Go back to the car. Like, hey, I need my vest. It's getting rainy. Whatever. Uh, you're in charge of that. Uh, and in each of those bags is a spare pair of shoes. And what happens is that bag will the you 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 pack that bag up and then the team brings it from one stage to another. They bring it to to whatever my speed. I just put everything in my rain bag, and then thinking it would go to the race. But this was a this was a continental team, not a pro continental team. So they don't different rain bag protocols. So they didn't bring the rain bag because it was a time trial. So they didn't bring a rain bag. So we get there and I'm like. Where's the rain bags? I put my rain bag in the car with my shoes in it. And they're like, oh no, we didn't, we took the rain bags out. They're down an hour and a half away at the hotel. So it was my fault because it's my responsibility to have my stuff. But it's also, anyway, you're not supposed to forget your shoes. Does it not Um, rain at time trials? Well, I guess not. I guess someone looked at the forecast and it wasn't going to rain at the time trial. I appreciate you being on my side. Um, well, it, it definitely Everyone doesn't knows rain. The forecast lies. It doesn't rain enough at a time trial for you to want to go back to the car for a jacket. Put it that way. <laughs> You're not doing that. Oh yeah, I see how that how, why they would do that, but it never occurred to me. And now uh, I have to borrow shoes from a spectator. And so uh, if we if you ask for standardized rain bag protocol, <laughs> you're right. It, but if that's one of the things like you can't get away with that on a world tour team. So in a way, like thank God, it, but it wouldn't have happened on a world tour team. But also thank God I didn't. Yeah, yeah you can't you can't do that kind of thing. Right. So if he's notorious for that, that's I could see that being a thing that you you know his director is losing his hair over. The Swaniers have spare everything but your shoes. The shoes. That's personal because you got the cleats and you got them all like you like them. But like if you forget your socks or jersey, that's all spare in the bus. Okay. That's not a big deal. 
um, you know, you're embarrassed to ask for it because you're supposed to bring it. But a lot of times, like, they'll give you a new kit for the tour. They'll give you a new kit every day because they want it white and clean and, yeah. and good for the sponsor. They show they show Philipson finishing the Alpe d'Huez stage uh, 36 minutes down. So that was the day that, that Vanderpool pulled out. And then they're like, Philipson finished 36 minutes down. Uh, really bad day for the team. It's just like, no, nah, it's nothing to do with it. The sprinters can finish. Him finishing with 36 versus 10 minutes down, what's the difference? Uh, really, like, the sprinter should lose as much time as he possibly can within time cut. So, so time cut, every stage will have like a different time cut and they'll announce it beforehand and it'll be like a percentage of the winner's time. So if it's, but everyone kind of knows about how long the stage is going to take. So they'll know like, okay, if today I can lose 40 minutes and not, but if you miss the time cut, now you're, they send you home. Now you're out of the race. So the sprinters, the sprinter's job really is on a stage like that to lose as much time as you possibly can, save your legs as much as you can. Like if you're a sprinter and you're burying yourself to finish 40th on that stage, you're in trouble. Like the team, the, the team should be happy with you if you finish far behind. So your job is like have a teammate to stay with you, make sure there's no drama so you don't like get a flat and lose an extra five minutes at the end that you can't afford. Yeah. But uh, normally there'll be like a group, here's all the sprinters and they know like when to pull the plug uh, and they, and they kind of cruise in together X, Y minutes down. So that was like a weird way for Netflix to communicate something wrong. How many, what percentage of, of the riders don't finish the race? Like, oh. How many start? And it depends on the year. Um, I'd say like it'd be a lot for 20 guys to drop out or okay. to, to not finish for whatever reason. So that's between like crashes and time cut. Um, like time cuts are like you kind of, you messed up with your time cut. Like that's, that's a mistake. Right. Like everybody in there is capable of finishing. So like you're not getting time cut unless you make a big miscalculation or I guess we've got an injury or sickness, something like that. The COVID years saw a lot more uh, DNFs than yeah. <laughs> the previous. Uh, it shows Vanderpool uh, the day that he pulled out. Uh, I, I like the scene of him where he, some, for some reason he couldn't get in his own hotel room. Your, your phone demagnetizes the room key and then you go back to the front desk and you're like, hey, I need a new room key. They're like, oh, did you have it uh, next to your phone? It's like, yeah, it's in my pocket where I put the two things that I have in my life and the hotel acts like it's your fault. Sorry, that got cathartic. That used to drive me nuts. But so he's locked out and then just ends up, looks like eating sushi in the hallway, just sitting on the floor. I just, I just I love the, the indignity of, of all of it. And that's just pro cycling in general, but also like a guy who just pulled out of the tour and he's just like, oh, I'll sit on the floor. You can film me here. And, and he's also like, he's going to eat while they film him because he's freaking hungry. Yeah. And, uh, and whatever. Part of, part of like what, what I, what I love about pro cycling is like, it's just like a little bit, a little bit bush -lead. and And there's now like a table of press conferences. It's like dudes sitting on a couch somewhere that they found. Um, so should I also do on. more trail leaks while we film? Oh, this podcast is for sure bush leak. <laughs> yeah. No, we're, we embrace the bush leak here. You I think snack. I ate all the chocolate. You can snack. There's no more chocolate. Almost. No, there's a few more. Here we okay. go. Two more. We'll get you another back tomorrow. There we go. Okay. Uh, and then it shows, it shows Roglic dropping out, which is, which is, I mean, funny, not funny. It's funny because... Two episodes ago, Pogacar was following Roglic's attacks on a climb, and it's like, I wonder how, if, you, if you're Pogacar and you see Roglic dropping out a few days later, it's like, yeah, well, I wasted some energy there. <laughs> like, could have let him win by two minutes and then still go home three days later because he's injured. Why was Wild, why was Wild getting all feisty on the bus? What was that about? The next it sounded like he was getting. Um, yeah, like earlier on, I was sort of making fun of the idea that he was going to work for himself at the Roubaix stage, and I think he he didn't. Obviously, like he waited for for his teammate that day who got the yellow jersey, and I think that that probably did bother Wout. And uh, this one, this was interesting. I, I I wish I could. I wish I knew how cooked this part was because it just they're they're giving like everyone gets their roles in the bus. Like, okay, you're getting water bottles, you're whatever, and it's pretty obvious you have the yellow jersey. Everyone's working for yellow jersey. It's kind of doesn't need to be said yeah. uh and wow kind of puts his hand up and says like hey i, I want to win the stage um do i have permission to go on a breakaway because i i don't want to win out of a sprint but it is funny to see him like scared of a of a bunch sprint because he did win the champs elise the year before <laughs> like the hardest um yeah he he does just fine in a sprint but he he you know if he thinks he can go better solo then i'm not gonna argue with him and all the guys are kind of looking at his i i don't think it, it's weird to think that he would bring that up on the bus in front of everyone because the way the protocol there normally would be like he would go to the director the night before and say like, hey, I want to win the stage tomorrow. Like, can I have a leash for that? Because there's a way to bring that up where you don't look like an asshole yeah. in front of your teammates. <laughs> like you ask and the you director. Would, 
Or, or maybe he did. Yeah, I don't know. Either he doesn't care or that, that was a little bit staged as possible. Uh, and that makes him look selfish. The other hand, they neglect to mention he is wearing the green, the green jersey, uh, which is that jersey is for the, it's the sprinter's jerseys. That's the points are awarded at there's intermediate sprints, but mostly it's for your finish placings, um, which is like he's not just selfishly trying to get a stage win. The green jersey is like kind of a big deal. <laughs> okay. So like him wanting to get stage results is valid in that you're supposed to get stage results and he's a champion, but also like. You know the the team has two jerseys, and that's that's going to look good in the final photo. If they could afford to to kind of spread that, they can, um, and ultimately they do. Yeah, and then again, Yumbo did have a bunch of crashes. Yeah, it's sort of like it, he his his selfishness was called into question uh, immediately <laughs> that day, where the yellow jersey goes down. Wow, kind of unapologetically looks at the camera and says he decided not to. And it's one of those like I I. If someone on the radio said, wow, you need to go back, he would have gone back. So that was like, they kind of made him into the bad guy when there either was no bad guy or if there was someone to blame, it's the director. I, For sure, if they said to go back, he would go back. And that wasn't like his decision. There's there's yeah. radios, it's all sort of discussed. Um, but he did. And then uh, and my thought, as soon as that happened, is just like, well, wow, you better win that stage. <laughs> like if you're going gonna to let Yellow Jersey chase back on with – you know, with one fewer teammate, uh, and, and you're going to, you know, sit there and, and position yourself, uh, you better win. And he, he came second. So that was, that was probably a quiet bus ride, probably a yeah. quiet bus ride. Some, so this, there were some feelings for sure on that one. Yeah. They show the guys like chasing back through the cars and there's a part, they, they had like, I think it's a flashback of Wout crashing on a previous stage. He's, he's on the bumper and the, the whole cars thing, like this is one of those things that removed from the sport. I'm just like, I can't believe how many, hundreds possibly thousands of miles yeah it would have been thousands because it's by training camps that, that i did like this far from the bumper of a car yeah. on like literally a public road like the roads are closed for the race but like they tap that thing and it's just crazy how rarely it happens like you have the the instincts and you fly around it and you go but like navigating the pack of cars it's it's like sunset boulevard <laughs> which i also ride sometimes <laughs> um and then the Breakaway almost stayed away that day. Asked before if why do you want to be in a breakaway, and, and sometimes the race kind of screws it up, uh, and that's what it would have been. There was, there was a weird. I don't know what happened there either. There was a weird thing where the the break was it. It was two guys with twenty seconds at twenty k to go. That's caught. That's like unless it's all descending or yeah, it, that's twenty seconds is nothing. The the rule for a breakaway is you can on a normal stage, like, you know, not crazy wind or whatever, you can bring back a minute for every 10 K left in the race. And everybody knows that everybody on the radios knows that. So like if there's 120 K and the break has 11 minutes, you don't care. It's like, you're going to bring that back. And it's like, it's that, it's that simple okay. math. Um, so I think what happened was they were at 20 seconds with 20 K to go. And the, and some of the teams are like, Oh, we don't want to catch them yet. So they block the road, they stop and like let the break go back out. Like, all right, let's let's get them up to a minute and a half with 20k to go. And and Netflix kind of put that as like, ooh, and the thing is, you know, he, the guy did get caught with fire mirrors to go, but also like they know they can catch him. It's it's just it's so controlled and it's so like those guys have it like because you see every year someone gets caught 10 feet from the line, and that's not like, ooh, he had bad luck. That's just like, that's how good these people are at doing this thing, <laughs> of like bringing it back exactly the right place and knowing how to time it and, and the sprinters know it. Yeah, um, there's, and, and you know, once in a while somebody somebody sneaks through one uh, or you, or it's like one of those like with 4K to go, you make a right turn, there's a crazy tailwind. Now the breakaway has an advantage they weren't supposed to and people don't calculate that. Um, so are the riders doing all this calculating or is it most of the directors? I mean, it's the director's job to do the calculating, uh, but but everyone knows. It's it's just like you know the gap on the radio, and like like some races. The the thing too is if it's only a couple guys in the break. If it's if it's ten guys with a with a twenty second gap, like ten guys are going to be faster than two guys, right? Like two guys, one guy, like you can bring him back whenever the heck you want. Uh, Thirty guys that would take you know thirty guys chasing who are stronger than them. That's a different story. So like the size of the breakers, a lot of times, like that's why the, the directors will say, okay, today let four, like keep the breakaway to four guys. And it gets, if it gets too big, they'll just weld it back together 
because uh, that's just too hard to control for the leader's team where it has to control it. So that's why, like, the, the, to win a stage, you want the breakaway big. If you're controlling the race, if you're trying to keep the breakaway close, you want it small. It's just an easier day for you. Um, but two guys, 20K is nothing, and those guys were always going to get caught, um, even though, like, it looked like it was close, but it's just that's, that's their, they have it dialed. Uh, but Philipson wins the stage. Uh, wow comes second. Uh, I like Philipson. He's emotional. I always, always like that. I always like the guy crying. It showed a very brief glimpse of Pogacar. You wouldn't have noticed this uh, congratulating him. The No longer in the yellow jersey, but uh, one of the race leaders, he's in the white jersey at that point. That's the young rider because he's still, I don't know, like 14 years old. Um, but he goes and gives him like a hug. So either kind of just an indication that, that Philipson is liked, that the other guys in the pack like him. Yeah. If, if, like there's some guys who, who win, everyone's like, ugh. Like nobody wants to see that. Yeah. And then there's other guys who's just like, oh yeah, he, that, that guy got one. We're happy for him. You know, remember that time he forgot his socks. Anyway, and then it ends with, uh, with Yumbo had you know, not a great day and the, they're cutting the bibs off the guy in the bus. That's just one of those, like you can, you can see it, you can feel it. Just like, ah, a lot of those, a lot of those days, he's he's gonna get, he's gonna have to get in the bus shower. He's gonna scrape it out. The team doc is gonna, cause you gotta yeah. scrape. You gotta make sure all the dirt's out of there. You gotta scrape I it. Know. I just love the, you're freaking out. I'm not uh, freaking out. I'm just like, <laughs> they give you a, like I would always want to do it myself. You brush it, uh, and then and then they, you know, they put some, they they cover it up, and then you sleep, and like your, you know, your your sponsored mattress is gonna get stained probably in the sheets and Maybe they just. Have- Mattress covers? No, the, they, but they probably put the tegaderm on there, and it and it keeps it sealed. They, they and wrap then, the mattress with saran wrap, so they don't also ruin. That's it. essentially what tegaderm does to yeah, your leg. Your it goes the other but, way. They they wrap it in there, and it's, it's just swollen and nasty. And then it's like, well, here's the next seven days of my life. I get to walk around like that and just be a little bit swollen, a little bit. It's it's just that's ah, it's rough. It's rough. So that's how that one ends. Um, all right, that's the end of episode six. Uh, see you back in a couple days for episodes seven and eight. Thank you.